Uh, my name is Bob Romero. I'm a motion picture makeup artist. I've been there since 1965. My father was the first apprentice in 1926. He started in 1916 on intolerance. So I kind of have a little bit of background. Um, so we're going to play with hair today. I'm going to start from the real easy beginning. I'm going to explain a lot of tools. I'm going to explain a lot of cheap ways of doing this. You should be able to start learning with $12, $15, $20. $20. That's the cheapest way. But you have to get a microwave or you have to have sunshine. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll start with, with hair and tools and what we got. Wool is the cheapest thing in the world. It runs anywhere from 5 to $7 a yard. And this, when they shave the sheep, it's just like thread. It's got a twist as you see it unwinding. Thread has a twist. Rope has a twist. It all has a twist. That's what holds it together. Because when we put the twist back in it and we pull it, that's what happens. Okay, we take the twist out. So it's that twist that holds rope, everything together. So when you see three line rope, it's all three line twists. Each one is twist, and then it's ro rolled together <coughs> in hot boiling water. Anyway. So this kind of has its own little crimp to it. And when you're working with hair, it's easiest to work with a little bit of crimp in the hair. Because we've got a, um, when you, if you take five or 10 straight hairs and you try and lay it on somebody, they're gonna have three in one place and one here and one someplace else. So they put a little crimp in it like this and it lets it flow around and work a lot easier. Uh, we have a machine we call a crimper. And it's basically for doing uh, cuffs on sleeves in 1800s, 1700s. So then we kind of adopted this thing. And when we put the hair in, we just had some wool bomb. It's just, you can crimp it back and forth in the stove, on your oven, uh, any way you want to do it. Just start crimping away. It'll put a real nice soft little wave in it. But what that wave does is when you pull it out and you're going to cut it. Oh, I've got the mic in my pocket that I love to use for shears. See, it plays out real easy. Or if I take straight hair and do that, it, it, you're fighting it all the time. This is, this is yak. But when you take it and you try and flail it out, it just too many stick together. So let's go through a little bit of hair and what, what it is. We've got wool in different shades. Yeah, I use red. You can t I've got some mustaches in the one gray case that are black and white. And what gives it a little pop away from being black and white is a one little red hair every half inch. That's one little red hair. It can be rust colored. It can be this colored. It's surprising what it does, but it gives a little bit of life to a black and white beard. Uh, you can use, uh, here's an orange. Here's kind of a maroony rust. And even a dirtier orange. All adds a little bit of life to hair. And sometimes you can go, if anybody knows anything about uh, hair colors, uh, when they do wigs and stuff, they go from like, from a one which is pitch black, 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 to a one uh, B or one A, which is a little bit of brown in it, so it's giving a little bit more life. But you start traveling around the Middle East or you start tra with Indian tribes or someplace uh, in Asia, you find that there is hair that is pitch black, totally black. There is hair that is black with just a grunt of reds in it, or like every race has, has redheads. Everybody, going through Africa, go through Japan, everywhere. Some, sometimes they used to execute them for having red hair. Sometimes they were the uh, crown prince. But that goes in every family. Um, the only thing problem is if you, like we were doing Taliban one day over on the unit, and somebody started making beards all in one color. So it just didn't happen. Too many guys come in. 
Uh, they were, one was Irish, and or what was he? I think he was Irish, and he just had a lot of warm colors in his hair, and we were fighting all the time on this stuff. So I said, finally, I said, tear it off here, and we'll lay the sideburns down to it. Um, there's a lot of little sneaky tricks, but to get um, one little tiny thing that I threw down here, these are color charts. So when you're dealing with hair, go to the hairdresser, if, and if they've got their act together, they will have basic color charts. There's samples of hair. There's samples of, in hair, there's samples in uh, plastics. Uh, and it's usually, one is dead black, and uh, 60 is dead white. This is 60. But that's yak. But you, know, you have all your blondes, you'll have redheads, and everything in between. So you may have, uh, if somebody's really lost and they don't know how to describe it, they'll say, well, I got a gray-haired fellow, and it's 40% uh, one, and 60% um, uh, number 60, white. That's not really the way to do it, but if you're caught, that's the easy cop-out. Okay, well, let's get rid of those guys. We can get into basic mustache patterns. Uh, easy way to do a mustache pattern. Get yourself a piece of paper. Oh, I guess I could use him. And take plain old masking tape. I didn't bring a little tiny masking tape with me, so we'll use this. So your actor's got to have a mustache, a beard, uh, three point. It's got to have a wig made. You basically just do that. Get yourself a Mark's lot. Two colors. Center of the, center of the body. Cent, corner of the mouth. Corner of the mouth. Mouth. Okay, so we want to have, let's say, a big full broom mustache. Okay, basically that's it. You don't want the hair going straight down because that's the curse of death. So just one or two little lines like that give you the idea of where the hair is going to go. We're going to peel that off. So basically, this is what you have. Put the fellow's name on it. Put the fellow's date on it. Now you can take this and fax it anywhere in the world. I always take, I got a quarter. I'll take this and I'll draw a line around it. And we'll put Max, uh, December 24th, 08. 25 cents. So you fax that. Now whoever your, your wig maker is, that's what they've got. Now, if anything happens in the facts, if it shrinks, gets smaller, yaws, or bends, or anything, you're going to know by that. Because almost everybody's got a quarter if they're an American and traveling. Or you can find a local coin that's just the same size. But if you start measuring it to anything, even if a nickel, and that's not round, you're going to know that it's off shape. So all they have to do is cut this out, put the lace on top, and start making. OK, basically, we've got our head. But first, I'm going to go through a little bit of hair and a little bit of what hair is. Uh, we all know it's uh, usually from some kind of an animal or human body or whatever. And if I remember right, someone told me that the, America, the human body has 300 kinds of hair on it. And if you look at the eyebrows and the little hair through here, and they say that this hair here, these little 10 hairs, is the finest hair on your body. Just that little bit right there. It goes down two or three different kinds on your head. Uh, the back of the neck is supposed to be different. Uh, peach fuzz on the, on the tummy. I mean, every, everything. All your legs, your arms, all that hair is different. And you get a real heavy hair technology guy in some kind of a forensic case, he can tell you where the hair came, came from on the human body, or if it's not human. Um, we're going to drift into hair. We went through wool. 
this is wool that's been prepped. It was originally straight. We took it out of the skein and we threw it in hot water. We threw it in a microwave for like 30 seconds at a time. And in about a minute, that gets boiling hot. And then you let it sit for a couple seconds, put your pot holder around the cup, throw it in the sink, and let it drain off. Take the cup, and I just, I always do that. <laughs> I'll take it and just kind of mash it on the, on the, on the wool or hair, and kind of get the water out of it. And after a couple seconds, you can pick it up and not get burned. Then you wring it out, put it in a towel, and just take the towel and twist it until it's almost dry. Then you take it back in the microwave, and you can put it on a plate or you can put it on a piece of paper, best on paper. Um, let it sit for 30 seconds at a time, and then 30 seconds, check it about every 15 seconds, because black will dry different than white. And when you put it in there, stretch it out like this. Because if you put it in a ball or it's overlapping them on another, it'll burn right through it. Why? I don't know. Something about microwaves. Or if you're real bored and you're out in the desert or someplace and it's nice and hot in LA, you can wrap it around the chair. That's the way they used to do it. They would steal somebody's set chair and they would wrap it around the chair and just put it out in the sun and turn it back and forth and be dry in an hour, half hour. Don't put it in your hackle because this was a nice, beautiful hackle and I let somebody hackle wet hair on it. And I had to take a broom and stand on it for an hour just to knock the rust off. And that was an expensive hackle. Uh, it'll start to get a little bit of a crimp to it. We usually run it through a crimping machine or that little tool that I, have, uh, that I put back down over here. And to get this kind of a crimp, a real soft, vague crimp, that's what we do. We basically do this or run it through an electric machine. And that'll be hot. And always have a little bit on the side. And when you pull this out of your stove, you can go over and you can grab it and you can see if it's going to ignite it. Because if it ignites it, it would ignite all that at once. So once it's got that little weave to it, it'll lay a lot better. It'll, it, it's, it stands out by itself stronger. And the hairs don't pile up. Now all these beards are wool. That's all wool. It was done for the uh, Museum of Science, uh, and uh, his sideburns were wool. This is all wool. It was for a commercial, for a thing called Popoids. Um, this is a beard for Star Trek, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I think that's all overlay wool on a, on a wool beard. That's a wool beard. That's all wool overlay on a, on a uh, yak beard. Um, that's another one. This is all, all laid white yak. You can see the difference between yak, and that's the hair off the back, which is the thickest hair. And this is uh, human hair. That's his own hair. This is all wool. Um, that's all wool. And we had to cheat and because his hair was pretty dark. And Cliff, uh, what's Cliff's last name? Nice kid from New Zealand. And we just tuck a little bit in the back. Now, uh, a, a Muslim claret would not have much hair. They usually take it and tie it and twist it around and pull it back under. But we thought, well, we'll just leave a little bit in here. And then uh, one of the fellows on the set that was uh, an Arab uh, came back and he said, leave it out a little bit. Uh, this was for a thing called um, was no Knife, what was it? Gene Wilder movie, a Western, where he was a rabbi. And this wanted being the chief rabbi. And as it turned out, I laid the beard on him, and they, we had a, uh, a white wig, or a white <laughs> beard on the back of his neck, because we had no white wig. And he had black hair, as you see. And they came up, and he had the rabbi's hat. And they said, well, it's a little too big. and blocks too much light. And I said, well, put more light in there. And they said, no, this is all candlelight. So if you see the movie, you can see in the beginning there's a, a form of rabbis uh, sending him to America as one of the first rabbis in America. And I, I got uh, Sue Moust, the hairdresser, and I just said, Susie, get the white wig. And Sue was like on. I mean, she just jumps. And she ran over, and all of a sudden I could see her around the corner going, 
you know. And I went around the corner and I said, you got the white wig? She said, no white wig. I said, great, over here, it's in the, it's in the beard box. And she just looked at me and said, fine, okay. And she took five white wigs and laid each one over the other one up. And this is the front of the wig on the chin. So there's right underneath the lip. That's the part in here. Uh, and this part is coming up the sideburns. So if you see the movie, that whole thing is all beards. <laughs> Worked out very well. This character was a commercial for an HFC finance. Uh, they didn't know what they were going to do. They called us in at 6 o'clock in the morning. And they said, we want a snowman. And I grabbed this piece, uh, I think it was V. Neal's husband's or something, for something. And wound up changing the lip line, changed the mouth from one of the Planet of the Apes mouths. Uh, just stole pieces from everywhere. The brows changed all that. Uh, painted him white and started laying the whole body. And this guy was six foot eight. So we had this blinding snowstorm with this guy from HFC Finance with a chicken or a bird on his shoulder. And he just comes up to the snowman and snowman pats him on the shoulder. And it was a blizzard of a snowstorm. And we had to lay hair all the way up his whole body, front and back. And we only had one pillow that we stole. We tore the pillow apart. We got makeup sponge out of the inside of this round pillow. And I sat and I cut the thing, cut it through the inside, slid his hand in like that, laid hair all over it. And so he was a one-handed, anyway. <clears throat> so in this town, you're going to find out when you get on commercials, you don't have time to think. Let's go into a little bit of older stuff. These two wigs, and there's a box of carnival stuff, came from an old um, circus clown. And he did a little bit of stage play. And when I came in in 1965, there were 102 makeup artists. And there were nine, I think, plus clowns. Now I think we only have one. Um, this is basically all yeah, uh, chamois. And this is a regular wig backing. But they would take the chamois and just run the hook in, tie, tie the hair on the chamois. And this guy was better than this guy because this the knots come through the back. And these are 18, 1800s. This one, I think, is 1860. Let's slide into basic hair. Okay, we've already kind of played with wool a little bit. And you know that wool is five million different directions, just like rope, string, anything. When we work with it, we straighten it out like that. Uh, and as we st straighten it out in the coil, we pull it out in part like this and lay it in on top of itself, just grabbing a half inch at a time, half inch at a time, until we get a pile like that. Then we come up after it's been crimped and straightened. And we can have this in our hackle. And usually we put a little bit of a twist to it. And the twist keeps it from, uh, if you pull one, it keeps it from all coming out. So we can actually straighten all this hair. We call it butting it up. We'll take, well, let's, let's butt some up. So I'm basically grabbing a half inch at a time. And it's all being butted up right there. So when I turn it around and put it back in the hackle, I can grab this. It's going to be the longest hair in there, all the way to the short. So as you're taking this out of the braid and doing it, you have to remember to keep taking the twist out and fluff it up a little bit. <clears throat> Once you've got it all like this, you can just boop. That's 8, 9, 10 inch hair. So you know your, hair, your beard can be that long. And as you start laying it down here, you'll want the longer hair down here. And you'll need the shorter hair, which is the shorter hair, up through the sides. Because you're not going to do a Santa Claus with the same length beard all over the place. It just doesn't look right. I mean, it gets too street bummy looking. Sorry, street bummies. But uh, it has a little tapered look. 90% of the time, you're going to be doing something like this. The father time, yes, you would like to have that all straight. Get yourself a nice little box like this. And you can put all your colors in here. 
You can put the straight, I haven't been in here for a while, but you can just lay it out and just steal out a little smidgen as you need it. We get into head hair uh, when we buy it. It'll be like so. Uh, two kinds of head hair. One is, this is right off the top of the head. It's all one direction, and if you know anything about hair at all, it has little, yeah, well, it's got little shingles. It's like the roof of a house. The only thing is, is if you mix this up and lay it like that, and blend it 50-50, it's going to be a lot fuller because those shingles are now butting up against one another and kind of fighting one another. If we're doing facial hair, that's fine because you're going to use less hair. It's going to be fuller and have a lot more body to it. But this is also comes in braids. This is probably done in the 30s. This has all been straightened. It's been bleached out. This has been crimped on a real large crimper. Actually, it looks like it's done, part of it was crimped and the rest is out of the braid. It's so wide. Is that real hair or not? That's, that's yak. Okay. Y yak and probably hair. This feels like, yeah, that's real hair. But you can see how that crimp keeps it from falling like this. I mean, there's just such a different look. And working with straight hair, you've got to be a wizard. And I'll tell you, laying that beard with straight hair, my father came by to visit, and he was 70, some odd retired, maybe 80. <clears throat> and he watched me lay this hair. And I just, I, I looked at him because he was an old friend of Ian's, and the only reason he came by to visit on the set, because he was an old friend. And I looked at him, and he just like, Kicking through his fingers, and I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? As we come down and we have our, our different hairs, we get into uh, yaks, and a lot of yak, if you ever saw a yak, is about that tall and got big horns. And, uh, Tibet and every place, uh, they use them as work animals. They use them as horses. This is usually off of the shoulders, off the back. And, uh, if you ever see a collie, and everybody's got to look at a collie because nobody's going to find a yak. Uh, if you start looking at a collie, you'll find right on down the back, you'll find this coarse hair. That's where when the rain hits him, the rain runs off the coarse hair. And on the backs of the legs, there'll be that real fine hair, and that allows it to sweat right at the back of the leg. So you'll find different kinds of hair all over. So every, everybody, when you see someone say, oh, it's yak hair, they only know the back. And this was usually blended maybe 10% in hair that we would use on a set. Here's white that's been bleached out, and it's a lot thinner. It's a lot softer because it's been bleached. Any girl's bleached her hair, she knows the problem. But actually, that helps and makes it work a little easier. These are different ways of, of shipping it and tying it. This is all a natural white because it's got black in with it, or gray. And each tire has his own tie and his own color that he uses. So. Forty years ago, you could probably get somebody sharp enough could identify him. Maybe somebody out of Demio Hair Goods in New York or uh, uh, Charlie Wright that was here. He knew them all. He'd look at hair and he'd say, oh, that's by so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and he knew what years. This was hair that uh, Barry Coper had. He came out of, uh, where did he go? India. And it's yak hair. But this is a softer yak hair. It's off, probably off the sides. Anybody who can't handle this, turn around. Uh, when they get a lot of yak, sometimes the yak is not alive. And this is the way you buy your yak, with the uh, skin still on it. You used to come in, I remember getting a, a whole yak skin out of Fox. And uh, they made me sit and cut it all down, shave it all down, and dress every ounce of it. And I had all this hair all laid out for thickness. and. That was really a lesson. But uh, Mr. Nye had a way of teaching you the hard way sometimes. Um, this is actually almost like genital yak, or the yak off the backs of the legs. It's so fine. Sometimes they even call this rabbit, but this is not rabbit. It's, it's yak. Uh, and you can see how much finer it is. But when you're putting a beard on, very few patterns will fit people. Uh, you almost want to 
make a uh, what we call a three-point beard. One, two, three points. That's a, like our cameraman's got a one and a half. Um, and maybe a five point would be up the sides. You can have four and five. Uh, a lot of guys will take uh, a scissors and they'll cut a sideburn out of it. And they cut a U-shaped line through there so that they could turn this because some people have to draw this back. I'm going to draw this forward. Uh, if, if he doesn't have a good pattern, God only knows what shape it's going to be. You can take a hundred beards and put them on a hundred guys and one's going to fit each one. So if you take and cut that little circle in there, and you only do it in emergencies because you've got one beard and it's got to fit do or die, uh, you can rock that sideburn. So if his sideburn's back here, you can rock it to there or you can rock it up here and then just lightly overlay it. You ever get stuck with a dead shears and you want to sharpen it? Get a porcelain yeah. plate porcelain cup, rub two of them together. Now the better the porcelain uh, or china, the, the nicer the edge is. You have a beautiful sharpening stone because the uh, glaze is on the bottom and on the sides and that is raw porcelain. But this is a cheap porcelain. So you just rub one against it or you pick one up that's been rolling around a coffee table for a couple years and it's real soft. And start with a crummy pair of shears, like I always have a paper cutting shears, just one of those things with the orange handles. And lay it on and you'll find a flat area. And once you find it, one thing we have problems with, if you straighten wool like this, and everybody rolls it up into a ball and they put it in their makeup case and all this nice fluffy hair that you had the day before starts getting like that and it all starts bunching together again and entangling itself because now you have all this wool with shaft running different directions all bunching up on itself so then you have to get a little rough and you have to pull it apart Whoops. Now, Freddie Blau used to take wool and he would literally beat it through the iron like that. Now, if this was straightened out or put in a microwave yesterday, this would all come right out in 10 seconds. But as you can see, as it gets old, it gets tight and gets all crisscrossed. If you look at an old wool sweater, you'll see what I'm talking about. And now that this is all a mess in there, we can start right at the bottom. Just grab a quarter inch at a time. Take your hands and you're pulling it together and just grabbing right down and you're putting it all in the same place. It's all butt up right there. You know, this was done maybe three months ago. As you can see, I still have trouble with it. But just pull it apart. Now, if you want to mix these two with something, like maybe I'll take a little bit of that black. And just make a little darker color of it. Now, what we're going to do in doing this is it's going to look like that in the hackle. But once we turn it around and steal the hair out of the end, we're not going to have that anymore. Because it'll all mix right through. Okay, now we're going to come lift it up. Put a little twist in it. You can see it's all mishmash. I don't know if you can see that very well. So we put a twist in it to hold it into the hackle. We come down to the bottom and we're peeling it a quarter inch at a time, half inch at a time. You can see that it's now all mixed up. Use Kleenex boxes for everything. Uh, you can open up the bottom, you can take all your hair and you can slip it right in there if you don't have one of these nice little pill boxes. I like the Kleenex box because it's porous on the inside. So you lay the inside down. Okay, now 
don't wear brand new Levi's, brand new slacks, brand new whatever. I mean, today we don't have the type of synthetics that we had when I was a kid. And I remember being at Fox. No, I was at Universal. And I was doing Hound of the Baskervilles. It was a redo. And we were doing a beard on this guy, and I went like that. And I went back to doing the beard, and I went like that. And I had a beautiful pair of slacks on. Well, they were made out of synthetics. And acetone just ate my pants up. <laughs> Walking around with my underwear hanging out. So now we just take a hair cloth, usually yesterday's hair cloth. Or I always wear Levi's just because you don't worry about wrecking them. Joe uses real nice stuff. The original glue used to come from the Isle of Chaos in Greece. Or chaos, if you want to say it that way. Uh, I use this cardboard to wick off a lot of moisture. Uh, your acetone and alcohol. That'll help wick a lot of it off. So we can put the first coat on. Uh, if I'm working with an actor, oh, I did a thing last year, and um, they wanted a beard on him a half inch long. Well, laying a half inch long beard is next to impossible. I mean, you can do it. Uh, it's your nylon stocking or uh, mustache lace or hair lace. Uh, you can lay the beard on with that. Lay the uh, hair, and they pull the lace off, and it pulls whatever hair is sticking on the lace. But it also stra straightens up the rest of it. Now, on the rubber head, you can just glue this thing to death. And the more you tack it with a brush or your finger, a lot of the guys would use their fingers. Uh, but then you've got to keep, keep your fingers clean all the time, or otherwise you're going to have hair sticking all over the place. Now, a lot of times I will take this and turn it right around, and I'll lay a mustache right there on the edge. Uh, as I said, you can use a nice piece of Formica, uh, a mirror. Now you can start to see it mat up. Now the shininess is going away. Okay, we're going to start this with, with a 45 degree cut. And I'll do it again on a hair that you can see. Basically what I did was I took the longer hair and I cut it in half. Now I'm cutting a 45 degree angle. Because when you glue this 45 degree angle, that's what you're doing. You're gluing this 45 degree angle on the hair. So this hair is actually being glued right to there, not like that. Because that little tiny hair it ain't going to hold on. So you're going to glue it like that. Okay? Now the second lay, because hair um, or wool, it's hair, um, if you lay it thin, you'll see a real thin spot on top. So to bring the other hair into it, you're going to actually cheat this hair down into it. So a little bit of this hair is sticking where the top of this hair was. Since I just found more. This has got a little curl to it where this is really straight. When you're on some shows, you, you, you prep hair like this for weeks. I remember prepping hair on uh, one of the first um, Planet of the Apes, and I, I just pulled hair for weeks. Now, there's two ways of getting that 45 degree angle on there. One is cutting it, or the other one is actually pushing it. Okay. And in pushing it, you'll get a 45 degree angle. But you don't push all the hair, just the surface, and the, each one underneath will drag it right along with it. Okay, again, I'm taking the hair and just lightly pushing it. Make it fuller. So we got a little bit shorter here, we got a little bit longer here. 
again, I'm going to take this hair and lightly push it to give it a little angle to it. Or you can cut it 45 degrees. And a lot of times I'll take a little bit of hair and I'll lay it right in here going that way. But I'll do that afterwards because this hair is all hanging. I'm going to be in the glue. At this point, you can get pretty rough with it. I always say put the screw on that finger. If you have the screw on that one or the in between and you cut straight up, it's going to be 45 degrees. So you put the, the screw of the shears on that finger. And you're no way you're going to cut yourself unless you get stupid and go like that. Now I've got the 45 on that angle. Now I'm going to put 45 on that angle. So now the hair is to a point, and I'm not dealing with it flat. And if I come in here real nice and kind of roll those two edges, I can kind of fill that in. And the reason I do the first one like this, cheap, fast, and dirty, is because people have to understand that if they're having trouble making stuff work, not to sit and cry about it. I mean, some people just get hangs for things and they can go 90 miles an hour. Some can't. Uh, let's get this real thin up in here. For this, I'm going to put like a little upside down V up in there. There'll be a little space on the sides. Now, I have somebody say, well, I can't afford a rubber head. They're $100. Uh, you got a glass cookie jar. Once you make a pattern, you saw me do the mustache, and you do the same thing with a beard, you can do the same identical thing with a beard. Ooh, let me get, turn this on quick. So basically, once you've got your hair in place, I'm going to come up in here just a little bit with this. Sometimes I'll take two or three hours to do one of these and just unload my head. Chris Westmore would, he would start the beard and literally walk away from it and go do something. And he'd have 20 pairs of shears. And he'd have the, I got him the finest white stones made for knife sharpeners. And um, he, I thought he was going to cry when I gave them to him. And he would sharpen his shears. And he'd go, one, two, three. Threw him over in a corner. Picked the next one up. One, two, three. It was amazing. The guy would go through equipment like I couldn't believe him. But when I picked the shears up from the new ones, I could feel a difference in just two or three cuts. It was amazing. Sometimes beards are thicker through here. Sometimes they're thinner. Sometimes they drop down. You just have to look at National Geographic and cut out every photograph of every beard and label the country it's from. Uh, someone said they have Russian heritage, they have Chinese heritage, they have everybody involved. And uh, you'll see this sideburns. Actually, this hair will grow this way. So anyway, basically you just take the coarse end of a comb. And you can kind of pick out all the junk hair. Now, usually, the shorter the hair, the wool is that comes out of the skein, that's thinner hair. That's the thinnest of it. And if you take the 10 inch hair, you roll maybe one in a fingerprint. You get down to the 4 inch hair, and you might get 4 or 5 in a fingerprint. So you can start cheating and making this edge softer by using that shorter hair. And now we're just stealing a piece of tape, any kind of tape. 
any kind of tape. Turn it around so the sticky side is down. Okay. Sticky side down. On the ends. That's sticky right there. Okay, I've cut a 45 degree cut. Oops. Yeah. I've got a 45 degree cut. I'm just basically coming up here. This should be the first thing you ever do with hair. Is, is get wool, it's cheaper. Put it on a, piece of, on a piece of tape and just do that. Now there's no reason leaving five feet of hair on there, 10 inches, so we just cut it right at an inch. But cut it, lift it up, and I'll do it again. This is the best exercise there is. 45 degree angle on the bottom, just cleaning the junk hair off the sides. Put this 40, bottom of the 45 right in there. If you can see, this is a little thinner than that. So this, on this edge here, will now become that thick because you're using just a little tiny touch of the bottom of the hair. So you know where it's right there? Come up and just drop it right in. So when you turn this sideways and look at it sideways, you're not going to see a holiday in there. And, I, and you always come up from behind when you cut. Okay, if you cut this way, it's going to be, it won't be, uh, won't be straight. Now I've got my 45 degree almost there. I just have to clean the little dog hairs up. And I'm putting the bottom hair there, right to there, not to there. So you're looking at it through there, you come down and put it down. You can come from the top if you want. I always like the bottom though. And whenever you're getting nervous, because six, if you get three feet of wool, three feet of wool, you cut six inches off, and you stick six inches in that box. So you've always got that. The reason is because if a hairdresser walks up and she's filling out a wig and she's begging for some fluffy hair, you got it. Uh, you might have uh, an Afro-American and you have to have a lot fuller hair. Uh, you might be doing uh, a hair, uh, filling bald spots. Believe me, get a hairdresser with a comb, comb forward, just quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, every quarter inch you just draw a pin line, fill it right in. Spray it with a little bit of Presto. So I'm taking this back here and putting it right there. Okay. Now if we want to get it thinner, so like we're com coming up on the edge, you want a real nice thin, a real thin edge. You can come up like so. Now, usually I'll, have, I'll lay down two, two or three pieces like this. <coughs> And if, you, if you're sharp enough and you'll overlap it, just that grunt, it'll stick to itself. Now, if we're going to come up alongside this hair, we're going to want to lay hair at a 45 degree angle. So now we've got this 45, and we do this 45, and this 45. And we come up through it like that. But that's just an exercise a cheap exercise. These are the way most irons come today. These are the more current shapes. This is one of the ones for rolling edges. Uh, I'll take the sharp edge off here because sometimes they, when they grind them it's a little too sharp and it cuts the hair. Now, a lot of people like different combs. You can use the metal one, you can use the different one. I'm going to use this hair here if I, you see me touch it. Make sure my stove is not too hot. Now let's get my picture out of the way because that's about a $25 print. So we can lift the hair with the comb or we can lift the hair with the iron into the comb and see how hot it is. And that's all right. I 
like a real hot stove. Wool burns faster than hair. Now I'm dragging the iron across and out, which pulls the hair with it. See if I can do that. Let's just give a little tobacco stain in this. And just turn a little orange. That's how you get the tobacco stain? Oh, you can put you can put it in there or if you, you can do it with an iron if you want. Now you're gonna kinda wanna do the bottom first. Uh, I wanted to leave that hair kind of full and ratty underneath. Everybody's afraid to play with wool. The only thing, it ignites a little faster and it's a lot cheaper. Um, when you pull it out of the skein and you put that little six inches in that box and the other wool you put in hot boiling or hot water, rather than a microwave or you just get it out of the sink hot enough or teapot. Uh, see how I'm dragging the iron? I'm bringing the curl down this way. Now this is where you'd have the guy's ear. I would have had an earlobe. I would have had somebody screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. And you can see how the darker hair darkens this down. Uh, my dad and I think it was Dick Nar. Dick Nar, God, that was a wonderful guy. Uh, they would sit and make me do beers, and Dick would come over and. I said, okay, now I want absolutely black underneath on one, and I want the same beard, the same cut of hair done in black and white. I want one done in black and one done in white. One's younger, one's older. And all this is is to show you, whoops, the uh, shadows and highlights. So one beard is to be white underneath, and it's to be dressed identically to the other one and one is to be black underneath. And I thought, okay, so I did the two beards, and the one that was white under here it looked fatter. And you cut a piece of paper out, and put a big U-shape on it, and it went like that, and you see, same shape. And the one with black underneath looked more finished. Now, for the real cheat, I'm going to take an ounce of Presto, which is just seaweed schmutz blue and a little alcohol. And you can press all the little fine hairs up. But that's a basic setting gel. I left that a little thin. Now we're going to get a can of Krylon. You can always, you can go steal this from a grip uh -huh. or, or a painter. We can take volume axe or freeze it. Now that this is fairly set, 
you can go in again and just clean off those little dusty widgets. Now we take our Krylon and I'm going to do this over a trash can. Okay, we're going to take regular alcohol. And when I label my alcohol, <coughs> and my acetone, acetone is more dangerous, so it's red. And you can buy these stickers, or you can just put red anything on it, red top. Alcohol is a little softer, so it can go with blue. So basically, all you're doing is just taking it and going, whoop, whoop. I mean, you can see it. This is a lot easier. And there's no, no reason to put acetone on anybody's face unless you've got glue that is glue from hell. And if you sit somebody down and you, you give them a towel or give them a handful of paper towels, and if they're in a rush, they say, let me, let me soak it off. If they say no, if, you have, if it's lace or something, you can slide off easily. Slide it off. And they say, I, 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 I got to go. And I had this happen last week. And I just gave the guy a towel with uh, Lubriderm on it. And I just wiped it all over his face. And I gave him a little extra, and I gave him two towels to clean up. And I said, by the time you're at your car, you will probably be able to slide 90% of that off. About 10 hairs hiding in there. When you're talking, sometimes you push it a little too hard, and you glue it a little too hard. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful. You can spray the inside if you want. It's going to be used real quick. You don't have to. And you just take your shears and cut in with the angles of the hair that is coming out. There's a crazy one there. There's a crazy one there. Best one. Okay. You can do this on the inside of a drawer if it's nice uh, plastic formica, but don't remember acetone will float it off, so you don't want to do that. Okay, straight line. We don't even have to bend it. We don't have to make a shape. We don't have to do anything. Let's do a little dark shadow on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to lightly put a 45 on it. This is going on the bottom. Put another 45 on that, on the bottom. Maybe I'll leave that long like that. OK, that's a little darker. Yeah, I gave that a little bit of a errant with my thumb, and just that to straighten it out. The nice thing about these are you can, you can sit and do 100 of them in a couple minutes. And as you guys tear them apart and eat lunch and food and they get lost, you can just walk right up and just grab them and go boom, you know. That was the uh, Volume X spray. Any of these punk rocker sprays will kind of work. And let's get a little more divot in there. Do this well, just while it's wet. Just that little. Now a little bit of Krylon, just enough to.
I took this off a little fast. I didn't do it dry like I should have. But that's basically it. Now it's all off. Take your shears and just You can do these short, you can do them small, you can do eyebrows. But when you're testing beards on somebody, maybe you want to have um, two pay tape because you can go right on up. That's so just a nice old gentleman. Only my hair, my beard's darker than this for some reason. I have no idea. White mustache, but. Yeah. And this is wool. This is 10 cents worth of hair. 10 cents worth of that. I didn't clip that very well. 10 cents worth of something off the, the sheep's body. So, bad. But you can soak them off with alcohol. Lightly respray them. Pin them up on the board. Grow on somebody else tomorrow. You can lay thinner hair up in here, thicker hair up in here, more white through here. Totally change it for the guy, for another person. Well, this is a, a short demo on uh, wool. You can speed it up when you're not playing and talking as much faster. Uh, as I said, you can lay it on this block. If you have a nice big cookie jar, glass cookie jar, go make a pattern with a tape and uh, just draw somebody's beard line with a uh, crayon or the black marks a lot, anything. Or you can do it with dots and actually that won't run as much as a drawn line. And you can lay it on a plain old glass cookie jar, do the same thing. So you're out, you're out for a black and white hair, maybe a little brown if you want to put some brown into it. So that's maybe 16, 20, 20 bucks. Some glue, some brushes, uh, a guinea pig, and uh, you can use a cookie jar. And you can really sit and practice a lot cheaper. You can go steal a piece of that little masking tape or gray tape out of the studios. Gray tape's great. You can do anything with it. Uh, you want gray tape to stick forever, you strip off a piece and you go put it on a light bulb and just wipe it back and forth. Now you've got molten glue. And when you put it down, it seals. Don't ever put it on skin. But whatever you put it on, the glue goes right through it. So don't put it on good furniture or anything like that. <clears throat> That's just a sneaky makeup tip. But if you're sending packages or something, that's the way you do it. Nobody can peel it off without ripping the box apart. Um, you can use a little tape and just practice on a on masking tape. Go to the painter and ask him for a two-inch roll. Uh, and go out and buy one if you want. And just reverse that little half inch on each end and stick the sticky stuff down on the table. And if you goof up, you can just take it and throw it away, start all over again. And you're dealing with pennies, absolute pennies. You're not killing yourself financially. Uh, the biggest expense is going to be spirit gum. I mean, a lot of spirit gum, and you can buy for this the cheapest gum you can get just to sit and practice with it. But practice on a little piece of tape like that, uh, and you'll start flying. You would zip along. I used to watch all the old guys in the morning, someone would sit there and do this, you know, like, and they didn't have that kind of tape. That tape just didn't exist in those days. It would be a, a black camera tape and a white camera tape. Uh, they would sit and just take a piece of paper and just put spirit gum on it and just go chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick -a and cut it and just practice for 10 minutes just to get the woodies out of it, you know. And uh, as I said, when I came into business, the average age was 68 to 73. So and my father was kind of, a, they, they called me a young one. He was 66, I think, or 65. So you never know. We never know where you're going to start. You never know where you're going to end. Uh, you never know what's going to pick your day up. Just enjoy it. God bless. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful life. Have a wonderful makeup. <laughs>